So with just four days to the to governorship election, political parties and their candidates are in a frenzy, doing all they can to ensure that they emerge victorious. TVC News Senior Political Correspondent Ayodele Uzubaku is on the standby in Benin to bring us update on the level of preparedness, especially on the part of INEC, what the political atmosphere is like. It's four days to the election. I bring us up to speed what's happening around the state. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission, they said after 14 items they have in their kitty that they've exhausted 12 and what is left is for the end of the campaign to wrapping up of the campaign and the election proper. But one of the most important elements in this election, ahead of this election, is the much talked about peace and tranquility during the election. So the National Peace Commission has put together a program in partnership with Yaga Africa and the Independent National Electoral Commission. They came together to put together this program talking about peace, all stakeholders, the major political parties, and led by the former head of state, General Abdusalami Abubakar, and the Reverend Matthew Kuka, the Bishop of Sokoto State Diocese, coming together to sign a peace pact with this candidate, telling this candidate what they should do on Saturday to maintain peace ahead of the election. They are going to sign the pact. I have a member of Yaga Africa with me, Cynthia Mbamalu. Cynthia, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What is the aim and objective of what we are seeing here today? Um, yeah, so for us, what is important is that both parties commit to peace. Um, it's unfortunate that for elections in Nigeria, there's always this incident of electoral violence. And our pre-elections um, report has shown that over to a third of the LGAs, that's 13 out of the 18 LGAs, had incidents of violence from the 13 out of the 18 pre-elections pre reports had incidents of violence. And what is this telling us? That with the campaigns, the violence, incidents of violence increased. And what we want is to have the parties, especially the PDP and the APC candidates, who would come together and commit to a peace pact. Now, the importance of this peace accord is when you sign, you append and commit yourself to the requirements and the obligations in the, in, the, in, the, in the accord, and that citizens can hold you accountable to that. Now, for this peace pact, we also, one of the things we want to see is that post-elections, but candidates, can, you can actually take candidate, candidates to court for a failure to commit to the peace pact. So a lot of people are be asking, is this not a formality? We've seen the presidential election, yes. and what do you have now? Yeah, no, this time around, we want it to be much, it's more, going to be much and more enforceable, but beyond that, also, that we're going to be able to pinpoint political parties parties that, that are failing in their responsibilities because we cannot keep having elections that every time we have elections we're talking about violence, people are dying, people are losing properties and with each pre-election survey we have seen, we have seen an increase in the spread of violence across the different um, senatorial districts, especially those that are referred to as the battleground LGAs, you know, like the or Oredos, the Esako West, um, Akoko Edo, Ikoboka Ego, even Ori Oriomo. So for instance, what you have is where um, LGAs that are seen as battleground, it seems like the parties are consistently campaigning there and the incidence of violence is, is actually increasing. We don't want this to spill over to the elections, but we need to start having people held accountable for that. The other angle is the role of the security, because one of the things we have seen, in fact, our pre-election survey showed that only 39% of our respondents expressed confidence in the Nigerian police. What is this saying? That most of the voters will not even believe the police will secure them. And you wouldn't blame them. I've been looking at Kogi. Would you know? that affect in any way? Has this affected? Now we have 2.2 million registered voters yes. with PVC in Edo State. But ultimately, when the governor is about to be declared, we'll be hearing of 500,000, 300,000. Yeah, so that is one, that's the other angle because they've been consistent decline of um, voters. In 2011, 38% of voters turned out, but by 2016, only 32% turned out. Now, in the presidential elections, only 28%, imagine, in a state with over 2 point something million. So one of the things we're looking at is, Violence has an impact on voter turnout because with more violence, people are scared to participate. If people don't have confidence in the security, they would also wouldn't come out. If people would also, also have confidence in INEC, they would be scared to come out. So we're saying that beyond this peace pact, we want a situation where people are confident to turn out to vote, but that security would inspire confidence rather than intimidate or deter participation in such a way that we can see an increase. I mean, I'm hoping that we could get up to 40% turnout in this election, but you know, that is almost a tall order. I mean, Consistently, they've been below 40% turnout, but if parties...
can use these last days of campaign to get voters to come out and the agencies do their rights with responsibilities, I think we can have something better this time around. Thank you so much. I wish Yaga best of luck in this election. Thank you so much. Cynthia Mbamalu from Yaga Africa. Over to you, Veronica in Lagos. Thank you, Aya, for the details there.